And we will have a standard kickoff to begin things. Gavin Stewart will kick it off. Malik Rutherford, a key player to highlight, is back to return. One of the most historic stadiums in college football, getting a preview of what next season will look like as off we go in the Georgia Tech spring game. Malik Rutherford will hold on to the opening kickoff. Mention that QB battle. It's a three-way battle between Haynes King, Zach Pyron, and Zach Gibson. Pyron and Gibson return from last season. Haynes King is the transfer from Texas A&M, perhaps the splashiest off-season addition, wearing number 10 in the green. Zach Pyron comes out first to get things rolling. And one of the things Coach he talked about is nobody has separated themselves at the quarterback position, and he's not going to name a starter coming out of spring. And I like that because what that does is that allows these guys to continue to compete throughout the summer and the offseason as they try to get that starting role. He flips it off to begin things as Christian Leary, who's one of the additions to this offense, a transfer from Alabama. One of the players you really like in this offense is we see the file on Zach Byron again. Initially a four-star recruit out of high school, redshirt freshman. His second season, perhaps a year where that thinking that goes into the first year isn't there so much. Second and one here for Team Reckham. As they go back to the ground with Dante Smith. Brought down there by Eric Reed Jr. And that was a good job on the outside by number 45, Ashton Heflin to keep that edge, not allow the offensive lineman to get pushed up the field. That allows for pursuit to get to the outside, to get to the ball carrier. It's a defense with new faces at key positions as well. As Pyron will hand it off again, it's Dante Smith again. A back that going into spring, perhaps thought of as their number one back for the fall, but there are some faces in there that can certainly give some competition. You talk about those faces, Trey Cooley, the transfer from Louisville, Dalen Gordon, Antonio Martin, and Evan Dickens, the freshman that has shown up very well this spring. Brings up first and ten. Pyron, the Pinson, Alabama native, hands it off to Smith. Good patience there from Smith on display and got through a few tacklers to pick up a decent game. And you said it, Jason. On that play, what Smith did was he allowed the play to develop. You watch right here. He gets the handoff. He allows the play to develop, and he follows his blockers. And you see his ability to break tackles. That's what you're looking for from the running back position. You want to see vision. You want to see the ability to break tackles. You want to be, see the ability to fall forward. And you saw that on that play. All runs so far on this opening drive for Team Reckham. Offensive players in the white, defensive players in the gold uniforms today. The running theme off the bat continues. Pyron can kind of run it himself as well. You see his numbers last year on the ground. Dual threat, Haynes King, who we'll see, is also a dual threat. From the outside looking in, it feels like that QB battle is primarily between King and Pyron. Gibson, though, certainly played a key role in the latter stages of last season as well for Georgia Tech. Potentially the first throw from Pirate. Instead, right on cue, he'll keep it and patiently run around some blockers. Obviously, you don't want to hit your quarterback in the green uniform in this game for us, but good to see the legs there. And I thought on that play, Pirate had time. I thought he prematurely took off and left the pocket. He had time to sit back there and allow the play to develop, allow your receivers to get into their full route. There was no reason for him to run on that play, and I'm sure the coaching staff, Coach Winky, will be talking to him about that. Be patient. Allow the play to develop. You've got time. The offensive line is doing their job. It's an offense with a new offensive coordinator, Buster Faulkner. We're excited to see what he brings to the table. Here's finally that first pass we were looking for, but it's in and out of the hands of the intended target, Christian Leary. And right there, he's trying to make a play before he has possession of the football. You've got to squeeze that football, be a hand catcher, squeeze that ball on the outside, and then turn up the field. Oh, 
Malik Rutherford's lining up at the bottom of the screen right now, along with Leary. Those are two of the top names to watch at a wideout, a position that kind of feels like an open door for Georgia Tech. Third and sixth situation here. Interesting to analyze the different situational aspects of football in these spring games. They go with a dart over the middle, and it's caught. Looks like it's you-know-who, Christian Leary, right on cue, your guide for us. For first down. And one of the toughest routes to cover the crossing route, especially when you've got a speed guy like Leary. Usually defensive backs are going to be in a trail mode, so all the quarterback has to do is lead his receiver to the football. You see right there he comes, he sits down in the pocket, allows himself to be a target for his quarterback. And once again, the offensive line is doing a good job in a down where you know they've got to throw the football and you're going to see the pass rush. It did a good job on the outside. Fresh set of downs on this opening drive for Reckham. Pyron back to the air as there is pressure coming from the backside. Good job for this defensive line that's trying to make up for some pieces lost as well. They feel kind of the interior to be the strength of Micaiah Scott, Dequan Douse. There is Douse, big number 99, 6'2, 282 pounds, Savannah, Georgia native. play of this opening drive. Georgia Tech, a program that won five and seven a season ago, four and four in ACC play. Some motion in play here. Pyron rolls out, finds Leary, who has room in front of him, cuts inside the 25, and ultimately dragged down, but not before a first down gain. 16 on the play. And once again, you want to find a way to get the ball to your playmakers. This is kind of an extended run. You get the ball to Leary on the outside, get him in the open field, allow him to do what he does best, which is make plays with his feet. You can already tell after that longest play of the game how much they like what he could potentially bring to this offense in Christian Leary. They go to the air again, and this is caught over the middle. DJ Moore on the receiving end. Another player who can kind of step up into potentially a larger role than he had a season ago. And a great job by Moore. He knows he's going to get hit, but he stretches out and squeezes that football and makes sure he gets it close to his body before the contact gets to him. Another Georgia native. Gain of 14 on that play. Team Reckham knocking on the door now in the red zone. First, first and goal play is a run, and it's into the end zone for a touchdown, a Dante Smith touchdown. And what you're seeing is you're seeing the offensive lineman make first contact, and usually who makes the first contact, that's the person that's going to win the battle at the point of attack. They're getting lower pass than the defensive lineman. They're getting on top of their assignments. They're playing good assignment football so far. That's how they were able to get down the field so easily, running and passing the football. There's a good balance, and the passing game helps him get into the red zone. And ultimately, splitting the uprights is Gavin Stewart. So out comes Team Swarm now for the first time in this Georgia Tech spring game. Haynes King will be the QB on Team Swarm to begin things. Again, perhaps the splashiest off-season addition for this Georgia Tech roster transfer from Texas A&M. Started five games for the Aggies in 2022. Dealt with some injuries. You see the numbers there. And he's a guy who could certainly make an impact and a guy who's vying for the starting job, has won starting jobs in the past at Texas A&M. So right now, starting off, you see Blackstrain setting to take the snap. Dickens, rather, setting to take the snap and runs right into the interior of that defense. We talked about the key losses and returners on this group for the offense you see here. So, leading receiver for Georgia Tech, Nate McCullough. He's gone. Hassan Hall, leading rusher, also gone. 
then returners saw Zach Pyron already at QB for Team Wreckham. Dante Smith had the opening touchdown on the ground. Haynes King's first throw of this spring game is caught. And it is an excellent grab made there by Jamal Haynes. 5-9 wideout kind of climbing the ladder there. And one of the things that Haynes King does a really good job of is sprinting outside the pocket and getting the ball down the field. When he gets outside the pocket, the defenders have to react on the outside. But you've got to stay on top of your man if you're a defensive back. You cannot pay attention to what's going on. They go back to the air. Looks comfortable on his toes early going deep again. Down the sideline again. That was reeled in. What a catch. Back-to-back -back plays. And Kenyatta Watson, number three, never turned around to locate the football. You've got to turn around and try and locate that football. But that was a great catch. He actually did turn around, but a great catch on the outside by the receiver. Abdul Jannah made the play on the receiving end for a gain of 38. Jannah is one of the new faces at a wideout for this team that we're keeping our eye on. He's a transfer from FCS to Quincy. They're working quickly. Big hit made on the interior there to keep that play from reaching the end zone. Dickens, Dickens took a pop from Braylon Oliver, who's one of the primary new faces at that linebacker spot, potentially the Mike linebacker spot. And that is what I wanted to see from Oliver, how he came downhill. And when you've got these big defensive tackles like Horace Lockett, like Bryson Dixon, like Zeke Biggers, six foot six, six foot three, 330, 340 pounds, they can clog up that middle and allow those linebackers to flow downhill. And you saw what Oliver is able to do when he has a lane. Jana comes in motion. They roll out, looking for the end zone. In and out of the hands of the intended target, the tight end, Jackson Long. They want to get those tight ends more involved this year. That was a touchdown that just kind of went out of Long's hands. And Long, you have to squeeze that football. I played with Long's dad at Florida State, and he's an athlete just like his dad, but you've got to squeeze that football. It's right there in your hands. I think he got really excited. A lot of guys get excited when they know they're getting ready to score a touchdown. <laughs> and he got a little bit too excited on that play. Long's another newcomer. Began his career at South Florida. They hand it off and cannot break the goal line stand of the team Wreckham defense that's holding their own backed up against their own goal line here. Excellent stops on the ground. And what you're seeing once again is those big stop defensive tackles and those A gaps clogging those gaps, not allowing those guards to climb up to the second level defenders. And when they can't climb up, those second level defenders, those linebackers can flow downhill. KJ Wallace got involved in the tackle there. He had 46 tackles a season ago. The guy who played his first three seasons at Notre Dame, returning starter in the nickel position. Interesting scenario to take a peek at. Fourth and goal. Haynes King's first series in front of these Georgia Tech fans. Goes to the back corner. Was that hauled in? They'll say it was. What a grab on fourth and goal in the back of the end zone by Avery Boyd. And Boyd just played grown man football on the outside. He just beat the defensive back to the football. And for Kenyatta Watson, you just got to work on turning around, locating that football. He was in position. He just could not locate the football to try to make a play on it. Boyd made a better play on the football than Watson was able to. Team Sorum looking to tie things up here. Aiden Burr splits the uprights. 7-7, seven, seven, very fun start to this spring game on a gorgeous day in Atlanta. 3-12 to go in this opening quarter. Again, first half is standard clock. The second half will have a running clock. And one, and the person we didn't talk about in that previous play, K.J. Wallace, he plays the star position. So you expect him to make those type of plays. He's going to be all over the field. He's one of those hybrid type players. So those are the plays that you look for from your leaders on your defense. So that is something that this Georgia Tech staff expects to see throughout next season. Wallace has already come up big on the goal line a couple of times in this spring game defensively. Pyron back in at QB, throws to the sideline. 
and has Trey Cooley out of the backfield, the running back, who transferred from Louisville. Georgia Tech actually opens up their season against Louisville, so he'll play his former team when the season starts over at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. And I'm sure he's looking forward to that opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> Not the first time Georgia Tech has gone to Louisville for a transfer at the running back spot. Hassan Hall, their leading rusher a season ago, was initially a Louisville Carter before transferring to Georgia Tech himself. So second time that Georgia Tech has dipped into the Cardinal pool, brought him over into the gold and white uniform. Saw a lot of runs early in Pyron's first drive. He's gonna get down the fields and into team swarm territory. Daquan Douse made the tackle there. Another guy on the interior again who we're watching for the D-line of Georgia Tech. About 90 seconds to go in this opening quarter. Pyron looking to a one-on-one -on -one matchup just out of the reach of his target. He's looking for Malik Rutherford again, showcasing his speed. Brings back the most catches from a season ago. It almost seemed like Pyron threw that ball prematurely. Wait just a split second longer. You have no pass rush. You've got time. Allow for your receiver to run under the football. I thought he threw that ball just prematurely. And a lot of times quarterbacks, they get in a rush because they see an opportunity on the outside. You know he's got one of his speed receivers out there in man coverage. But just allow it to develop. There's Eric Reed defensively at the safety spot, drifting back with him. Bring a man in motion, then run it to that same side. Going to break some tackles there was Trey Cooley, junior from Raleigh, North Carolina. That was a good job by Kevin Harris, number 11, coming from the opposite side of the field in pursuit to make that tackle. Kevin Harris is a guy that Brent Key pointed out in our conversation yesterday. As someone who's had a really good spring, he's another player who began his career at Alabama. Well, you talk about Kevin Harris, Kyle Kennard, and Noah Collins, and they all have that size as an offensive tackle that makes you fear their pass rush. Six foot four, six five, between 240 and 260. You know they're speed rushers on the outside, and they've got long arms, so the ability to get inside hands on those tackles. Jamie Felix in it, running back. They throw right to him. Trying to get a first down. It appeared as though he got enough. On third and eight, he picks up 12. And Pyron is in a real good rhythm right now. He knows where he wants to go with the football. He's throwing the ball to his playmakers and allowing them to make plays on the outside. Amari Harvey made the tackle. Do you kind of practice speeding up a little here with 20 seconds to go? It's the first quarter. It's a tie spring game, but do you still practice that a little bit? Absolutely. You want to play situational football, and you want to prepare. And the only way you can prepare is in live action. The yep, opt to go to the ground here with Jamie Felix. He's dragged down. We'll, we'll interview head coach Brent Key when we come back to begin the second quarter. Been a fun start to a sunny afternoon here in Atlanta. Start of the second quarter of the 2023 Georgia Tech spring game. We welcome in Georgia Tech head coach Brent Key. Coach, thanks for taking the time to join us on the sideline here. Awesome crowd, fun atmosphere. We've had a good time talking about some of the new faces we've seen already make an impact. Haynes King, Christian Leary, we saw Braylon Oliver make a play. What have you made out of your players so far that your fan base is going to be introduced to in this game? Yeah, that's what we wanted to see. Some guys come out. And, all right, there in a minute. Uh, see some guys come out and make some plays when, when their number is called here. You know, but, but the blocking too, like right here. I mean, we have sustained blocks on the perimeter now. I mean, we get guys out in space, and we got guys that can make plays in space. But it, I mean, it's not just the guy with the ball in their hand. I mean, it's everybody takes takes everybody doing their job. And that brings me to my question, Coach. Talk about your offensive line so far. What you've seen that you like, and what you want to see improvement on? Yeah, I mean, we're we're shuffling guys around right now. And, uh, you know, it's like Jordan. Jordan uh, has jumped out the left tackle. You know, he's really, you know, he played. He's banged up a little bit, but uh, you know, some other, I think Corey might be. But uh, you know, it looks like pass pro has been pretty good so far. You know, pretty static up front on defense. But uh, giving the quarterback time to get deliver the football. Uh, 
you know, you want to see some of this run game. Though. There, there, there you go. Good read on it. Good read. Good read. Uh, you know, but you, you, want, you want to see some holes open up inside. That's where you really challenge the offensive line is, you know, it's, it's one thing to, you know, kind of get them stretching side to side and, you know, plays bouncing. But, you know, we want to see some plays hit up in the middle. Uh, you know, as, as we develop our, you know, our, our offensive line, guys, you know, we've got to get two, three yards, you know, when we need it up the middle. Coach, you mentioned to us your staff, a lot of new faces on it. It's a staff built on championship pedigree and a lot of really talented coaches. If you could give your fan base a message about what they bring Hit to the inside. table. Hit it inside. Hey, down. If you could give uh, your fan base a message about what they bring to the table, what would that be, your, your new coaches? Yeah, I mean, I mean it, anytime you've had guys that have been through the fire and, and know what it takes to win, it's important because, you know, once you've been through those types of seasons and, 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 and you know the – you know, everything it takes, you know, just from the, you know, from the preparation, you know, to how to coach the players, to you know, getting the players to sustain, and that's important. We've got a lot of guys on here that won a lot of football games and you know, been on championship teams, so uh, it's important to have those guys. Good job, Brett. Uh, it's important to have those guys on the field. Thanks, Coach. Really appreciate your time. That was short. Come on, it guys. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, Coach, I got one more question for you. Talk about your tight ends. You've had yeah. some, uh, you, Brett just made a good catch for you on the outside, but Long had an opportunity to uh, catch a touchdown pass, and um, I think it was Benson had a pass across the middle. What do you yeah, want to see was, from that position group? You know, uh, that was Dylan, you know, on the seam route, you know, went down, you know, balls a little low, and you know, that, that's that's where the great ones do. You know, they're able to make the make the hard catches, and, and you know, that's what we got to continue to see us improve on. I mean, but, you know, it, it's, it's good the quarterbacks are seeing them, you know, that we've got them involved in the game, and, you know, continue to make the plays when the number's called, right? Good. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. All right. Thanks again, Coach. Really appreciate right. it. Thanks for hanging around a little longer with us, too. Uh, it's all good, guys. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> appreciate you, Coach. All right. Bye. And it's interesting that he said that because a lot of times tight ends do get overlooked. And the fact that they've had three to four passes thrown to them already early, and this ball game shows that the quarterbacks are seeing them and using them. And what that does is that makes defenses have to prepare for the tight end position, not only as a blocker, but as a pass catcher. It was so cool to hear his mindset, his thoughts verbally Why? come out yes. <laughs> while we were chatting with him there. Brent Key is an awesome personality. You see Gavin Stewart line up here on this field goal attempts. That misses wide. So remains 7 7 in the second quarter of this Georgia Tech spring game. Brent Key and his new staff coaching them up on this Saturday afternoon. This is the hashtag when Brent Key was still the interim head coach that was really spiraling around these parts. Hashtag make Key head coach. And this is the mom of QB Zach Pyron, Leah Pyron, who put out this tweet and really kind of resembles the feelings of this community as a whole towards Brent Key and how much they collectively wanted him to be named the permanent head coach and certainly the backing from his players all the way to getting that job on November 29th. Well, living here in Metro Atlanta, I saw the fan base and how they adored Coach Key. And, you know, Coach Key is a former offensive lineman, offensive line coach. He's one of those guys that plays and coaches with intensity, and you see the reflection of the players, of their coach, how they perform and the energy that they exude out on the football field. And you saw that the latter part of the season when he took over in an interim basis, and that's why he was named the head coach. Haynes King back in, and QB just has to throw that one away. Some good pressure from the line. And we could feel his passion when we spoke to him yesterday about how much he loves this program. Of course, an alum himself of Georgia Tech and really wants to build it in the right direction. It's a program that over the last three years averaged about three and a half wins. Forrest, he picked up four wins in a, in a pretty short time frame just in the last season alone when he came in as interim head coach. And two of those wins were upset wins right, over right away. Teams. Away. And that was the thing that was, that was key to me. Not just ranked teams, but they were at their place. One of which came against North Carolina second to last week of the season. Excellent job to jump the route there defensively on the play was K.J. Wallace. We've talked about him quite a bit so far. Really active there. And one of the things you're seeing, the offensive tackles, they're opening those outside shoulders. You've got to keep your shoulders square to the line of scrimmage, get three kick steps, and then open up and run those defenders past the quarterback's level. Seeing some athleticism on both sides of the ball.
mentioned some of the new faces on this Georgia Tech team so far. Christian Leary, transfer from Alabama, has been really good. Here's a list of the key transfers. Braylon Oliver had a big hit earlier. Some of the names going down the line at different spots on both sides of the ball at very important positions. Linebacker, certainly one of them. Of course, the QB spot. Zach Gibson is now in at QB, by the way, in the green jersey. There's Braylon Oliver on the bench, coming over from Minnesota, returning to his home state. Douglasville, Georgia native. Douglasville about 30 minutes away. Really cool to see him back in his home state. Played very well for Minnesota and P.J. Fleck. You know, he was coached very well by P.J. Fleck in Minnesota. His older brother Brandon also played for Georgia Tech from 2013 to 2015 as we see Zach Gibson take the field. Guy who initially began his career at Akron. Talked about that win over North Carolina. Gibson played in that game and he had 174 yards through the air. 13 of 18. Didn't make any mistakes in route to that win. And one of four quarterbacks who was used a season ago. Of course, if you're Georgia Tech, you certainly don't want that to be the case this year when it comes to using four quarterbacks. This is a battle that forced he brought up it, it kind of intrigues me in the sense that this could not only it's not going to end here it could go into the summer into the fall which makes you train that much harder i love it i love it because no one knows who's going to be the starter that means yeah. the majority of these guys are probably going to stay here during the summer going to continue to work on their craft going to continue to compete throughout and that's what you want to see you want to see the competitive nature come out of the most important position on the football field because if you don't have a quarterback, you can't win football games. So you want to see that competitive nature come out of these guys. So I like the fact that Coach Kidd is allowing them to continue to compete throughout the spring and into fall camp. I feel like the offensive line in front of these QBs is much improved this season as that passes out of the reach of the intended target Malik Rutherford. But it was a young offensive line a year ago. Well, what you want to see from your offensive line, once again, from your guards and your center, you want to see them stout at the point of attack. They've got to be strong. They've got to have square chins. They've got to punch. They've got to be hand fighters right there in the middle because they can't give ground. You want your quarterback to be able to step up into the pocket, climb the pocket, and step into his throws. For your tackles, you want them to be dancing bears on the outside, square shoulders, three kick steps before you open that outside shoulder because if you open it prematurely, you give a short corner to your quarterback, and you have to protect your quarterback. So the tackles have to be stout as well, but they've got to be dancing bears. They've got to get those three kick steps. They've got to keep that outside shoulder back, and they've got to use that inside hand to turn those defenders outside. Dancing bears is one of my favorite terms in the game of football that I hear my analysts. I, I just love it. I love it. And you said it twice there. <laughs> it was phenomenal. Well, you're on an island yeah. as an offensive tackle. You know, you don't have anybody on your outside usually because you're just not a tight end, especially in passing downs. So you've got to be able to dance out there. Try to dance here on a third and long scenario. Pass to the sideline. This one is complete. DJ Moore, the redshirt freshman from Loganville, Georgia, makes the play on the sideline. And DJ Moore does a good job of climbing up on those defensive backs and pressing them and making them make a decision. And you see right there, he's basically wide open on that play. But it's because he presses those defensive backs. He gets up the field. Maybe that'll get Zach Gibson into a rhythm. They go to the grounds here, though. Battling for extra yardage. Jamie Felix. He's one of the younger running backs still, a sophomore. Another Georgia native. At 23 carries a season ago, Antonio Martin is also in that conversation of young running backs. Meanwhile, as Felix comes off the field. Seen some good work out of Dante Smith and Trey Cooley today as well. Got that running back spot. Felix's latest run brings up second and six for Zach Gibson, who wants one of his tight ends. And it's bobbled in and out of the hands there. And he was looking for Wilhelm. Marshall was on the coverage. He just put a little bit more air under the football. Great idea. He knew where he wanted to go with the football. He had his tight end, Wilhelm, on the outside. Put a little bit more air so the defender can't make a play on the football. The secondary will certainly be a strength for Georgia Tech this year. Perhaps the strength of not only the defense, but maybe the team. 
and Marshall that made the play on that uh, made the defensive play is one of those bigger defensive backs that coach he talked about six foot three 196 pounds he talked about having big defensive backs guys that can get up in these wide receivers faces long arms play physical at the point of attack on the line would get off the line of scrimmage so that's what you see from the defensive backs on that side of the football and you see the length at six foot three able to get his hand up there and knock that ball down maybe a smaller defensive back is not able to knock that ball down it's a really interesting point you bring up about the dbs along the back end jalen king 6-1 blake powell lee 6-2 the miles brooks 6-2 Kari G, who isn't playing today, six foot two. They've got some some length. They can match up with the height of opposing receivers in the ACC. Gibson with a fresh set of downs, flip it out of the backfield here. Has his running back Trey Cooley dragged down on the backside. Coming up to make the plays, Ashton Elflin, a young linebacker they really like. And once again, you see pursuit from the opposite side of the field. And as a defensive coach, that is what you want to see from your defenders. Another dart. This one is caught by Leonard, and he gets past the pylon. We'll see where they mark this. At the moment, looks like they're bringing him down at the one. Leonard is a guy who Brent Key feels has been the most consistent player of anyone in spring so far this season. And Leonard didn't squeeze that first pass, but you saw him right here. He kept his eyes on the football, able to get it to his body, and almost drags the defender to the end zone. I thought he scored on that play. I did, too. His gain of 27 is what they'll call it, one yard short of getting into the end zone. I would give him close. a score. Yeah. It, it feels <laughs> a replay. Close. I'd run a replay on that right there. The Forrest Connolly replay review. Yes, give a big fella Leonard to score, the man. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, waltzing in with the legs is Zach Gibson for a touchdown. And one thing the quarterbacks have done a good job of on their decision making on that read option, when they see that defender come downhill, they pull that ball out and get around the edge because there's no contain. The defenders have to do a better job of staying home, but they're coming down to try and make the big play on the running back, and the quarterback is doing a good job of reading that and pulling the ball out the belly of the back and getting around the edge. Extra point is converted. It's now a 14-7 lead for Team Reckham on this Saturday afternoon. Buster Faulkner, new offensive coordinator for Georgia Tech. He's also coaching the tight ends. We saw Dylan Leonard make that 27-yard reception. The Forrest, I think you still want to maybe review to see if that was the touchdown potentially, but I in dinner, it Dylan was. Leonard's book, it can be the touchdown. It was a touchdown. As here are the legs on display of Haynes King. They'll blow this play down, but that tight end position that hopefully they can throw to a bit more this season and get some more 27-yard gains just like that will be an emphasis because they didn't get a ton of that last year. Well, they've got really good size on the outside of the tight end position. You go 6'5 with Dylan Leonard. Uh, you've got Brett Seether at 6'5, 228. Luke Benson, 6'4, 236. Uh, Jackson Long, 6'3, 230. Stone Bonner, 6'4, 220. Ben Wilhelm, 6'5, 263. So they've got a lot of really good size and length at that position. Uh, and with the tight end position, you have to be twofold. You've got to be a hybrid offensive lineman, basically. You've got to be able to block on the edge. You've got to be able to knock a defensive end off the football. But you've also got to be able to be a route runner and be a target for your quarterback. And when the opportunity presents itself, because not many do, you've got to catch the football and make a play. I mentioned earlier you played with Jackson Long's dad, Kevin, at Florida State. He was there from 93 to 97. Here's a deep shot down the sideline. An attempt to come back to the football there from Abdul Jannah. And defensively there was Kenyota Watson. And you see once again trying to get down the field the football, but not enough on the football. I thought the defensive back was in perfect position to make a play that could have been an interference call on the receiver on that play. A 
Queens Kings numbers at the bottom of your screen there. The transfer from Texas A&M has his fifth completion of the afternoon. Finds Ward. Speaking of tight ends, another one gets involved there. Billy Ward. Gain of 17 here. And once again, they're looking for the tight end, and that is key. And a great job by Ward to adjust to a football that was thrown behind him to reach back and pull the ball to his body. Down the seam they go. And is that ball caught? It is not. The completion of the catch was not made by Abdul Jannah. Well, we've seen him go vertical down those seams a couple of times. Once again, defended there by Kenyota Watson. But Jannah, you've got to catch that football. That's right there. But I like what Watson did. He didn't give up on the play. And that's what you want from your defensive backs. You can get beat at the point of attack, but don't give up on the play. He continued to fight all the way down to the ground and was able to get that ball away from Janah and knock it loose. Another tight end not playing today, by the way, is, is Luke Benson. He could be one to watch when the fall rolls around for the depth of this Georgia Tech offense. Can you go to Watson? A good start today for him at DB. Kind of see him at the safety spot, corner spot. You know, he's got NFL DNA. His yeah. dad played for the Dallas Cowboys. Certainly knows the game well. A little trickery here. They go back to Haynes King, but, but that's not fair. Believe. That's not fair. You can't hit the quarterback. Come on. Don't run uh, that. That's not little fair. Little pass interference on <laughs> in the quarterback there. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of corners, it was Miles Sims coming up to make what you feel a play that shouldn't have been made. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, at the end of the day, you know, if you throw it to him, what is the DB going to do? He can't right, blow him right, up. You right. know, in the regular game, he's going to blow the quarterback up. And Miles but, Sims. but a good job of staying home by Miles Sims. Yeah, excellent player. Began his career at Michigan, and he's a guy who's a shutdown type corner coming back for this Georgia Tech team. Atlanta native and a redshirt senior with a ton of experience. He'll be key for them defensively. Kind of having to make the throw off his back foot there was King, and he came up well short for the intended target, Antonio Martin. Well, they got pressure up the middle yep. uh, with that defensive defensive lineman. One of those big fellows was able to get pushed at the point of attack. And that's what I talk about with the guards in the center. They've got to pick it up and put it down. And when I say that, I mean pick that outside foot up and put it down. You don't step forward, you don't step backwards. You got to hunker down. Fourth and ten. They'll go down the sideline looking for Boyd in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And it's broken up. Look who's there again. Kenyota Watson having an excellent game defensively. And that ball was a bit underthrown. If he steps into that throw, he had an opportunity to hit his receiver for the touchdown. We'll step aside. Got a fun afternoon with plenty of battles at the position, skill position spots here in Atlanta. Zach Pyron back in a QB. A three-way QB battle between Pyron, Haynes King, and Zach Gibson. We've seen all three quarterbacks so far with Pyron and King taking the majority of the reps. Pyron dropping back. Pressure was in his face. Goes down the sideline and has an open man. And a touchdown for D.J. Moore. 55 yards to the house. And throughout this afternoon, DJ Moore has been wide open. Once again, you see him press and the receipt, the defensive back got caught looking in the backfield. He did a stop and go route. And once you get that defensive back to react to you stopping and you hit go again, <laughs> you've got to recoil and try and catch up. But that was a perfect throw down the field. All he had to do is run under it and squeeze the football. It was a pretty throw. Pyron, a pro-style QB that can use his legs. But there you see his work and arm strength down the sideline there, out of the pocket. Well, I like what Pyron did. He put enough air under the football for the receiver to run under it. But DJ Moore, once again, he's been pressing these defensive backs. And when you press, I mean, you're getting up on them. You're climbing on them. So when you do that so often and you stop and you make a catch, the defensive back is used to that. So they're going to stop to try and come up and make a play. And when he did that, he was able to get by. And once he did, if we even are leaving, he's down the field for the touchdown. Again, players today are kind of switching back and forth between both teams defensively and offensively. But we've seen some really nice work out of the secondary 
so far for these teams. DJ Moore offensively making the play there in a wide receiver battle as you see him sitting next to Malik Rutherford. That feels again kind of like an open door right now with the production they lost from a season ago. Rutherford returns the most catches, but there are some spots up for grabs. Gibson in at QB now, patiently holds on here. Well, you've got to feel very good about the talent on the outside with DJ Moore, with Rutherford, with Leary. And we haven't talked about him yet, but you've got Chase Lane, the Texas A&M transfer, that'll be coming in in the fall. He's not here right now, but that's another addition. And, you know, he and Haynes King already have a connection from playing out there together at Texas A&M. Billy Ward made the catch there. Down the seam. Yeah, you, you mentioned that's a, a chemistry between King and Chase Lane. Lane won't arrive until the summer, as will high school signees as that route was here. It was jumped and nearly intercepted by Kenyota Watson, who continues to have quite the day. And they might need to leave Kenyatta Watson alone. <laughs> yeah, maybe stop throwing that way. I get, it's almost like he's getting mad, like, okay, you're going to keep throwing at me. I'm going to start trying to take <laughs> these back to the house. But once again, the tight end is getting the football. And that is key to me in the development of a young offense using all of your skill sets and all of your athletes on the field. I like the way they're spreading the ball around and getting it to their tight ends. And it's not just one particular tight end, it's every tight end. They flip it out. This is one of the young running backs, Evan Dickens, who splits through traffic and reaches his way down the sideline there for a nice gain. Dickens is a compelling story if you're a Georgia Tech fan as well. He's a freshman, hasn't played college football yet, signed out of high school as an early enrollee. And one thing I want to see from the blockers on the outside, maintain those blocks. Don't just go out and get a pop. You know, get good extension and maintain those blocks. If they maintain those blocks, Dickens may still be running. Dickens, a uh, Roswell, Georgia native, finished his high school career at IMG Academy, but prior to that, played at blessed Trinity High School in Georgia. Final minute of this opening half. Gibson flips it out. They have a gain along the sideline here. Going deeper into the running back chart. Anglin Williams makes the play. Makes up a good chunk of 17. And a good job of Anglin to be able to get around the edge and turn the corner. You saw the defensive pursuit coming, but he did a good job. And you saw the speed to the outside. Forty-seven seconds left in this opening half. Again, we've seen all three quarterbacks so far. Take some reps. This is Gibson's second series. To call a timeout, maybe dip into some situational football here. Forty-seven seconds left in the half. You're kind of knocking on the door of the red zone. Yeah, you're right outside the red zone. You want to practice that red zone offense. You want to practice that two-minute offense. Once again, you you can't simulate live action. So this is an opportunity to see how your guys perform when the clock is running, when you're against uh, the half, and you want to get a score on the board before you go in for halftime. There's a certain part of the playbook that you open up when you get to this part of the field when you don't have a lot of time. Because anything you throw, you want to be want it to be to the sideline where they can get out of bounds, or you want it to be in the end zone. We have seen him kind of try to work through those sidelines a bit. This is the brother of Zach Gibson on the offensive line, Tyler Gibson. Maybe see him at left guard, possibly left tackle. Left guard spot is one that's an open competition this year. They go to the sideline, as Forrest mentioned, in a completion. Well they've, got the some well, they've got some timeouts to play with. Uh, so they can throw the ball in the middle of the field, but you want to practice getting it to the sideline, to the end zone, because those are the situations that you'll be in, and those are the situations you cannot simulate. They've done a good job of making this feel like a real offensive flow today, this afternoon, and that's what Brent Key wanted to do. We knew some guys would have to switch back and forth due to being thin in certain positions, and players still arriving in the summer. 
But they've done a nice job of this as it's dumped over the middle. Down to the 10 now after another reception from Anglin Williams. And because he got the first down, the clock will stop. But a good job getting the ball to Williams and allowing him to get up the field. First and goal, quickly to the air, one-on-one -on -one matchup in the corner. Unable to complete the process of the catch was Boyd, who's made some big plays so far. It's what you'd never want to see in a spring game. A bit gimpy getting up here is Boyd. So he got into the battle in the corner. And he felt awkward on that play. Yeah. He couldn't brace himself. Right on the right side of his hip. Avery Boyd has played well today, a part of that wide receiver competition. We've seen his explosiveness and speed. Good to see him pop up off the turf. Getting some help, though, here. It was primarily used on special teams last season. Could be a primary target of wide receiver. Well, it's good to see him yeah. be able to walk. Albeit it's gingerly, but he's able to walk on his own. And like you said, Jason, these are the things that you fear in spring games. You don't want anyone to get hurt. You want to see good competition, but you want to stay away from the injuries. Mari Jones Cummings came over to high five him who was on the coverage defensively there. Twenty one seconds left in the half. He'll reset things and come back out offensively. Hope we see Boyd in the second half. been a fun player to watch today. See if they maybe look for the tight ends down in the red zone here. Instead, they flip it out of the backfield. And here is the freshman running back, Evan Dickens. Has a bright future ahead. They've really liked what they've seen out of him in the spring so far. Again, hasn't played his first college game yet. But looks pretty comfortable out there. And he runs behind his pads. That's what I like about him. He's not trying to go down. He's trying to fall forward. He's continuing to fight all the way through the tackle. You don't usually see that from young guys. That's something you usually bring guys in and they develop that skill set because they've always been supreme athletes. But now you step into an arena where everyone is a top-notch athlete. So you see a young guy be able to do that early, you know you've got potential for greatness. He remains the back in here. They hand it off to him, picking his way through the interior and into the end zone. Touchdown for Team Swarm to get back within seven, potentially, here in the opening half. They get the extra point. And you see the vision. Once again, he's able to bounce it to the outside and then put his head down and go forward. That's what you want to see from your young backs. Don't run away from the contact. Run to where the hole is supposed to be. Put your head down and keep your feet grinding and get to the end zone. Extra point is good. So a seven-point Touchdown separation between Team Reckham and Team Swarm here in this Georgia Tech spring game. Again, we'll have a running clock in the second half of action. Offensive players in the white, defensive players in the gold for both teams. Forrest Connolly, Jason Ross Jr. with you here in Atlanta, previewing a Georgia Tech team that it feels like they're certainly taking a turn in the right direction. Brent Key's impacts in a brief time period has been felt. That's the end of the first half. As they'll wrap up the first half and take off those nine seconds. And the intensity of this spring game has been felt. Been a good, rhythmatic offensive flow for both teams with excellent athleticism being shown defensively and offensively. Been a pleasure to bring it to you so far. Halftime coming up. Team Reckham with a 21-14 lead at the break. 
back here in Atlanta. Students showing up for the 2023 Georgia Tech spring game between Team Reckham and Team Soar. Forrest Connolly, Jason Ross Jr. welcoming you back to the historic Bobby Dodd Stadium here in the heart of Atlanta on a sunny 80 degree day. A perfect day for football. And again, the preview of what the fall could look like. Doesn't it feel good? Just, there's nine ACC spring games going on around today. A lot around the country. We still got some months until we get to the regular season. But seeing the action and very important action between specifically the quarterback update on this Georgia Tech side. It's a battle for who's going to be the starter when the fall does roll around. Aids King, Zach Pirate, and Zach Gibson all with reps today. You see the yardage, completion percentage, and touchdowns for each of these three QBs that are in the midst of that battle for who's going to be QB1 eventually. And I have to say right now, Pyron is playing the best of all three. Uh, he's 11 of 16 for 153 yards. He had that long 55-yard pass. Uh, he's been spreading the ball around. But the one thing, once again, that has stood out to me is all of the passes. There's been 38 pass attempts in the first half. I would say at least 10 of those have gone to the tight end position. And I like the way they're spreading the ball around to the tight ends, to the receivers. DJ Moore has kind of been the guy on the outside uh, from the receiver position. And I think Kenyatta Watson has shown a lot of promise on the edge from the defensive back position. They got to him a little bit early. He did not flinch. And I like what I saw from that because you're going to lose on plays, but it's how you react and respond is what makes you the player that you're going to be on the football field. Yep. Secondary has been really fun to watch. So far today, highlighted by Kenyatta Watson's play. It'll be a very strong Georgia Tech secondary when the fall rolls around. Watson begins this series on the sideline. And QB is Haynes King, the Texas A&M transfer, goes down the seam here. Had intentions from Malik Rutherford, the speedy wideout, who will be a starter in the fall. I feel like Haynes King has really transitioned very well from A&M to the Georgia Tech uniform. Really endeared himself to the Aggie fan base with his physical grit, his mental toughness. When he stepped back into the starter role last season, it was the game when Texas A&M fell just short to Alabama. At the time, number one Alabama on a goal line stand at the end of the game. Dealt with injuries at Texas A&M that kind of caused things to be a bit up and down at times. Played there from 2020 to 2022. When you talk to people about Haynes King, and they have nothing but good things to say. Dual threat QB with 4-6 speed, too. On third and five, he drops back. Pressure comes. Steps out of the pocket. Showcasing those legs eventually dumps it off. Trey Cooley was the check down option. Pirouettes a couple of times. Does Cooley. Now Cooley is tiptoeing down the sidelines. Fun sequence of action there. And what you saw, ladies and gentlemen, was an OA play by number 28, Jalen Marshall. You gotta make that play. Watch him come across. I thought that was a, a cover, excuse me, yes, a coverage sack because they were covered up down the field. But watch number 28 right here. You've got to make that play. You can't just take your shoulder now. You've got to wrap up and make the tackle. And I'm sure he's going to hear a lot about that in film study. <laughs> you cannot make an Olay like that. Not if you want to get on the field. When there's a play that you know you're going to hear about in film study, do you, do you immediately think about it? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> he's thinking about it now. He's thinking about making a play on the field. So if they go, when they go over that play, he can say, go to the next play, coach, and see what I did the next time. Haynes King mentioned the 4-6 speed, showcasing his burst there on a designed run. One of the things about Haynes King that I like is he's played in, you know, big-time pressure situations and performed very well. So I don't think this quarterback competition phases him whatsoever. Playing for Jimbo Fisher, you, you've got to be strong-minded. So coming here and playing in this quarterback position, uh, in this quarterback battle, I think he welcomes the challenge. Keeps it again. Haynes King won the starting job twice at Texas A&M. He was the starter in 2021. The season was cut short with injury, then began 2022 as the starter. Things didn't go quite as well, but then returns to the starting job after some injuries. And again, that was the game where they played number one Alabama at the time and fell just short. This Georgia Tech team 
ended their season, the five and seven campaign from 2022, with a loss to the eventual national champion, Georgia. But the week prior to that, knocked off at the time, number 13, North Carolina. And we talked with head coach Brent Key about that win over North Carolina. Wasn't really thinking about that much. It's all about the next day, the next step of momentum, what just happened. They don't really have much of a view of that, what just took, what took place in the past. It's all about the now. And I love that because the past can't help you in the future. Right. Uh, you know, you can learn from it, but uh, you've got to get better. And you've got to leave that there. You don't want to be what you were in the past. You want to be better than you were in the past. Feels like they're on track to do that. Trying to get back to a bowl game. Last one came in 2018. New faces on this team. Good play here made defensively. Well, what you're seeing, the defensive linemen do a good job of their hand fighting. They're getting off of these offensive tackles. The offensive tackles, the offensive guards, they've got to do a better job of maintaining those blocks. That means you've got to get inside hands, get in those chest plates, drive your feet. You've got to be able to bend your knees, sit down in your stance, and duck walk those guys out. You cannot reach over yourselves because those hand fighters will pull you off and get to the ball carrier. James King finds Dylan Leonard, the tight end, gets inside the 10-yard line. And Marco Coleman is the new defensive line coach for Georgia Tech. Uh, most people think the interior is going to be the strength, trying to replace some key edge rushers. And once again, you're finding the tight ends. You're using those tight ends, those big guys on the outside. They're doing a good job of catching the football, getting down the field. And look back at Marco Coleman when he played. He was a great hand fighter. He was one of those guys that could beat up an offensive lineman, you know, grab him and jerk him and do whatever he wanted to do with him. And that's what he's looking for from his defensive line. It'll be a touchdown right up the gut goes Dalen Gordon. The running back finds the end zone. And a drive that opens up the score here in the second half. And once again, you've got good push from the offensive line at the point of attack, flat backs, and that's what you want to see in the red zone on the goal line, flat backs and firing off, basically bear crawling, uprooting those defensive linemen. 28-14, the team Reckham lead. Early stages, third quarter here in Atlanta. With Louisville, that's at Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta. And you see a couple of non-conference matchups for Wake Forest, Bowling Green, Miami. Get the elimination of the two divisions this year uh, in the ACC will be interesting. So that'll again open up with Louisville. We talked about Trey Cooley, running back and transfer from Louisville. He'll play his former team in that season opener, which will be pretty cool. Antonio Martin on the ground here. And in that game, he'll have to control his emotion. Uh -huh. You know, because you, you get so emotional. You want to prove to those guys that, you know, they didn't play you enough. You were better than the guys that they had playing. And you changed teams to show them. And now you get the opportunity to show them the first game of the season <laughs> on national TV, a national TV game as well. Yep. That'll be a fun way to open up the campaign. Some ACC action. Pass down the sideline is a one-on-one -on -one catch made. Beautiful play and catch. Avery Boyd waltzes into the end zone. Good to see him back after he was a little gimpy earlier with that injury to his leg. Returns and makes this play 70 yards. And I love what Boyd did. He waited for the ball to get there before he made a play on it. The defensive back could not read his eyes. When you're running, defensive backs like to read the receiver's eyes. He waited till the ball got there. And then he kept his concentration, squeezed the ball with one hand, fought off the defender with the inside hand, and was able to get to the end zone. Puts team swarm back within six. With 8.53 to go in this third quarter. That was a pretty pass. Beautifully drawn up play. And a wonderful catch made by Avery Boyd. He's been explosive today. If you're a Georgia Tech fan, keep an eye on nine in white. We know about eight in white Malik Rutherford. 
but the receivers around him to create multiple targets for whoever your starting QB is is going to be really important. Talk about getting the tight ends involved too. Just hopefully having more targets this year. And Boyd is not a small receiver, six foot two, 230 pounds. And Brody Rhodes, what I like about what he did on that play, he sat patiently in the pocket. Yep. He allowed the play to develop. He did not get nervous. The pass rush was coming, but the offensive line did a good job. You saw that stopness between those three offensive linemen in the interior, and you saw the width of the pocket be maintained by the tackles, and he sat in that pocket and put just enough air under the football for Rhodes to run under. First series for Brody Rhodes results in a 70-yard touchdown pass. What does Haynes King have in store for us? He wants a deep shot and has it. Down inside the 30 goes Malik Rutherford. And I tell you what, they may need to put King out of Watson back in the football uh -huh. game. <laughs> but these quarterbacks are doing a good job of getting the ball down the field. Once again, putting it right where your receiver can run under it, just like Boyd did the previous play. Now you've got Rutherford being able to run under the football here. All right, battle of the deep shots now. We had a 70-yarder followed up by a 51-yarder. This time, go a bit shorter to the sideline. Able to connect with DJ Moore. Former four-star prospect out of high school now, a redshirt freshman. And one of the things, Jason, I'm looking forward to as well is the defensive line. What kind of pass rush we get from those big interior linemen. When we talked to Coach Key about him, he talked about their athleticism how much strength they had and how well they played in the early portions of the game. But he wanted to see that same intensity in the latter part of the game when they're a little bit tired, a little bit gassed. Another aspect of situational football. This time back to the ground game. See how these defenses can hold up in the second half on a pretty warm day. Here in Atlanta, these players obviously used to the warm weather. That's always something to take a peek at as well. You see right there, they're starting to get a little bit of push on those big interior linemen. This is when you test those guys. And you also want to see how your team performs in adversity. So for those defensive backs that have been getting beat on the outside, let's see how they perform when the ball comes their way again. Quick play, designed, screen set up. Some nifty footwork here. Reversing it back to the opposite side. Goes Leary. Showcasing his footwork. And stretching. Rutherford has the pylon. Malik Rutherford showcasing the work to both sides of the field. And this is why you have those speedy receivers on the outside. You give the playmaker the ball in the open field, and you allow him to make plays. You see him reverse to the opposite side of the field. He allows for the block to be made. Dylan Leonard, you know, he didn't hold. He could have held on that play, but he did a good job of not holding, allowing himself just to get in the way of the defensive player, and you allow the speedy receiver to get to the outside and get in for the touchdown. Malik Rutherford takes a long route for an 11-yard touchdown and one for his highlight reel. Looking forward to the draft. We know a few Georgia Tech names will be involved. Talked about the linebacker position, the work of Charlie Thomas and Ace Ely a season ago for Georgia Tech. Certainly earned those guys a shot at the NFL. Those are two names to keep an eye on, among others. Three different transfers at the linebacker spot trying to fill that void for Georgia Tech this season. Aiden Simo in at QB now for Georgia Tech. KJ Wallace is a guy who could be in the NFL in the future, and we've seen why today. Well, the player that I think you'll see or hear uh, his name called early is Keelan White mm, uh, from yes. Georgia Tech. You know, th this guy was a terror <laughs> on the edge. Uh, and what he brings to the table. Uh, but you talk about those other players, uh, Ely and Thomas. Uh, you know, you, you've got 230 combined tackles with Ely and Thomas. So that's some big shoes to fill. But White, what he did great was rush the passer and keep that edge and hunker down on the edge and play just as well against the run as he did against the pass. And I think that is what makes him such an intriguing prospect for the next level and for NFL coaches because he's a guy you can plug in and play. 
and he's not a guy you have to bring out on certain downs. You put him in the football game and tell him to go be a football player. And I think that is what you're looking for when you're talking about first and second round players, uh, first day draft picks, and he has that skill set. So it'll be interesting to see where he ends up. It's DJ Moore back to return that punt. When it comes to guys who could step in for White, look at Kyle Kennard, Sylvain Yajuin, on the edges for Georgia Tech. Aquilo Stone is one that perhaps on the interior. Brent Key pointed out to us another player who's had a really good spring for the Yellow Jackets defensively. And Coach Key talked about Etienne Rubin too, the transfer yes. from Clemson. He said this last week of practice, it seems like he's gotten it and he's figuring it out. And when you look at his size, he's six foot three, 295 pounds. If you can get somebody with that size and that strength and the knowledge that he's coming to this program with from playing at Clemson with those great players, now you've got yourself something. But once again, you talked about Kennard, Harris, you know, Collins. When you look at those guys, and I said it earlier and I'll say it again, as an offensive tackle, when you're game planning, you see a guy between six foot four, six three, six four, six five, between two forty and two sixty, you understand there are some intangibles about those guys. They've got long arms. Uh, they're going to be speed rushers on the outside, and you have to practice your footwork in preparation for those games because of their ability to get up the field and make you open up that outside shoulder prematurely. ETOSA Rubin has two seasons left of eligibility. Coming over from Clemson, Kevin Harris we've talked about as well today. It'll be interesting to see how those players develop. There's another battle when it comes to blocking. And one of the things the defense have done, has done a good job of throughout this afternoon is pursuit from the backside. I don't see a lot of offensive linemen, you know, on the backside getting up to the second level and getting on top of those linebackers, covering them up. They've been able to flow to the football. Zach Gibson in at QB. Underneath route there. He's looking for DJ Moore, who initially slipped. Harvey was on the coverage. A good attempt by Moore to try and get back up and get that football. And as a coaching staff, that's what you look for. You don't want to see a guy that falls down and pouts because he fell down. I want to see a guy that falls down and gets back up and tries to make a play. Because that can be the difference in winning and losing a football game. That feels like the Brent Key mindset. Maybe the last play of this third quarter. Gibson under pressure here. And as you mentioned, that pressure from the backside of the D-line comes into play on the final play of the third quarter. We'll go to the fourth when we return. Look at the Jackets returning to Ireland. We'll open up the 2024 season in Dublin. So cool against Florida State in an ACC matchup at Aviva Stadium. It'll be Georgia Tech's second appearance. Go back to 2016 against Boston College. And speaking of Ireland, there's David Shanahan, an Irish native from Castle Island, Ireland. Maybe we could go there one day for us. It's a town of about 2,500 people. Mm -hmm. Wonderful place. Castle Island AFC is the town's soccer team, as we would call it here. And also the Castle Island Rugby Football Club that we can go watch. And it's got to be exciting for him to yes. be able to go back to where he's from and, and showcase his skill set with his football team. And that'll be a great opportunity for the ACC once again to showcase two great programs. That'll be super neat into this fourth quarter now with the running clock. Team Reckham and Team Swarm. Offensive players in the white today. Defensive players in gold. Zach Gibson at QB again. They go to the ground. Gibson trying to get out of the way there. Yeah, Brody Rhodes back in at QB. His second series now. And 
Rhodes was impressive in the first drive that he was on the field. Impressive throw down the field. Seventy yards in his first series. Looks comfortable stepping up here and using the legs. Brody Rhodes exploding up the middle. They'll mark it down. And I understand that you don't want to hit the quarterback, but I feel like if that was live, Rhodes would still be running. I did too. I don't think they make that tackle. That's why I got excited. And, uh, Rhodes is showing some quick twitch and kind of letting everybody know this is not just a three-headed monster for the quarterback battle. You know, <laughs> I know we came into this ball game talking about Pyron King and Gibson, but Rose is making some plays and showing he has some ability to play the quarterback position. And when he breaks contain, he's got some speed and some quick twitch. Rhodes, a redshirt sophomore. Kent, Georgia native. And this is a young man that passed for 3,500 yards in high school with 30 touchdowns. I mean, he's not a pushover. And ran for, as we just saw, ran for over 1,000 yards as well. He can use those legs to be effective. Georgia Sack, again, had to go pretty deep down the depth chart of QBs this season ago. Used four. They don't want to do that this season. Hoping to find the guy. Rhodes trying to prove that he could be in the mix. Maybe a bit of a mis miscommunication there in terms of what they were trying to do. You, you've played in these games. You've been in these players' shoes at this stage of a season after the game today. What are the next steps like? Uh, you want to go back. You want to look at film. Uh, you want to see what your mistakes were. Uh, you want to talk to your position coach and ask your position coach, what can you do better? Um, what do they need to see from you as a player? And then you start film study and you start the physical nature of preparing for the season. Is a good chunk of that on your own motivation, under your own volition, in addition to the regimented nature that does come with college football and your staff? Well, one, one of the things that we did as players is we stayed uh, during the summer because you can work out daily with your teammates. Uh, you can go on the field and work with your teammates. Of course, coaches can't be out there, but you as a team can have team-organized activities, uh, and you build camaraderie. You've been, you build, uh, you know, that kinship that you need uh, to perform at the highest level. And you keep your mind laser focused on what, you know, the assignment is. You know, that's the new thing now, knowing and understanding the assignment. But being there, to me, you get to really encompass what it's all about and what you're preparing for. And Jackson Long, to me, is an interesting candidate for that tight end position. Here's a kid that he comes from, you know, football DNA. His dad played, of course, with me at Florida State and played for the Tennessee Titans. He was a tough tight end coming out of high school in Tennessee, in Hendersonville, Tennessee. He didn't find his way at Texas A&M, so he comes here, uh, excuse me, at USF, so he comes to Georgia Tech, and I think he's got an opportunity to, to be a contributor to this ball club. When we talked about the tight ends, they've got them all over the field, but I think he has an opportunity down the road to be a key contributor to this offense. Brett Seether is another who transferred from Georgia. As Brett Key said, he moved over to the good side. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Seether didn't really have any opportunities to catch balls at Georgia because he's playing behind the best pass catching tight end in the country in Brock Bowers, who led Georgia in receiving a season to go on the way to that national championship. But here the door might open up a little bit. But not only Bowers, you had Darnell Washington, right. too, who will yeah. probably be a first or second round draft pick this year. So, I mean, it was just hard to get on the field there. And the way the tight ends are looking right now, it's going to be hard to get on the field at Georgia Tech. <laughs> I mean, they've got some, some guys at that position, and we've seen it throughout this afternoon, spreading the ball around. They go to Evan Dickens here, the young running back. And you said during the commercial break, as we see Brett Seether there, this is a team that looks like they got some talented receivers on the edges. And you add in tight ends to the mix, it just gives your QB more targets and more balance. It makes you more dangerous. And their tight ends can run. That's one of the things you don't see often. 
you see one or two tight ends that can run around the country. But these guys, they've got a bunch of guys that can run and that are hungry. And when you've got hungry players, hungry for an opportunity, if you've got a coach like Coach Key that's going to push you to be physical on the field, to play dominating and aggressive football, you get the best out of your athletes. They want more production out of that position, maybe offensively this year. Again, new offensive coordinator Buster Faulkner is also the tight ends coach. Brett Key felt like Buster Faulkner checked all the boxes in terms of what he wanted in an OC. Rhodes escaping out of the pocket. He'll use his legs again. Boy, he has some good acceleration as he ventures over towards the sideline. I'm telling you right now, I like Brody Rhodes. I like what I see from him. He's fearless. He, when he doesn't see it, he goes and gets it. He can avoid the pass rush. He's got speed to get out to the edge. You see the defenders getting frustrated because they can't get to him. I like this kid. You know, it's interesting when Coach Key talked to us about Jeet Wade getting that offensive line coaching position. He said he wanted somebody totally different from his philosophy because he wanted the kids to see and hear and feel something different than what he was teaching them. And he's getting that from that offensive line. You see the production. They've had some really good plays. They've had some so-so plays. But I think they've stood pretty well against this defense. D-line creeps up there. Able to breach the offensive line and eventually a loss of a yard on that play. About a little over 20 recruits in attendance today as well. Soaking in the game. That's always a cool aspect of spring games. So many around the country. Obviously, that's a period that's taken place always, the recruiting process. Well, what's cool about it, you get to come into the stadium and coming from a high school stadium to a major power five stadium and seeing the potential of playing in front of 50, 60, 70, 80,000 people, the thrill of all of that, you know, it, it just, you, you see guys with their eyes wide open. And so it's a great opportunity for those guys to see the potential to be here and be a part of this program and part of what Coach Key is building but it's also an opportunity for parents to see the type of program that their kids are looking at possibly coming to and being able to look at the coaching staff in their eyes, look at the academic staff, look at, you know, what the program offers totally. It's a great day on campus to do it. A little end around action here. Results in a hard collision along the sideline. Here's Jamal Haynes on the carry. Speedy 5'9 player. I played with a guy that was five foot nine that was pretty good himself, uh, a guy named Ward Ben. <laughs> and what's, what's difficult about those guys is you can't find them. And when you get to them, you think you're just going to take them down because they're not the biggest guys in the world, but they're powerful guys. Is that kind of a player harder to tackle? Yes, because they're slippery. Um, they can get under defenders. You know, you've got to get low to tackle those young men. Bit of a mishap on the exchange there. Rhodes pounces on it. He'll live to fight another day. One thing Brent Key talked about with us was kind of taking that next step towards executing and doing that consistently. He talked about the emphasis on physicality. He said uh, he found out pretty quickly who, wants, who wanted to be here and who didn't want to be here. He said if you can sustain a block who can sustain a block and who can get off a block is one of the most important things he's looking at we've seen that physicality on display today as the field goal is good 444 to go on this fourth quarter clock welcome back to bobby dodd stadium Getting towards the dwindling stages of this 2023 Georgia Tech spring game. It's been a fun one to watch. Again, a fun format today with the two teams. At times, players going both back and forth between the sides. But really saw some talent, such as Braylon Oliver there, that will be on the field. When the fall arrives and making big plays, hopefully for this Georgia Tech team, as Dylan Leonard makes the catch. He had 10 starts last season. 
And once again, Dylan Leonard stretching out one-handed catch, able to get both feet down. That would be a catch on Sunday. Georgia Tech again will begin their fall season with Louisville in Atlanta at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. A Georgia Tech team that again went five and seven a season ago. Would love to get back into bowl contention and perhaps more this season and flip that script around. We've seen teams do it, certainly, when it comes to flipping around, say a five and seven season, a six one season, whatever it might be, and take the next step quickly. And they have a new coach, new head coach permanently now in Brent Key. The interim tag was removed this past November. He built a staff on what they feel is championship pedigree. They really love what they've put together. New face coming in via the transfer portal as well. An averaged about three wins over the past three years. Or three years, but Brent Key picked up four in just his interim tenure alone in the 2022 season as that pass was deflected. One of the things I think Coach Key brings to the table with his ball club is an expectation to win. They are going to compete. Uh, they're going to be physical. They're going to play sound football. They're going to run the ball at you. They're going to play grown man football in between the tackles. And we see they're going to use the tight end. They've got speed on the outside. They've got to continue just to develop that quarterback position. We've seen the wideouts look really good today. Here's a cut putting his foot in the ground. It's Malik Rutherford who explodes all the way to the end zone. Maybe one final highlight step for Malik Rutherford on this 2023 spring game. And you see Rutherford change direction. And once he gets to the open field, he's able to make plays. And you, all you have to do with this Georgia Tech offense is get the ball to your playmakers. 64 yards on that touchdown. But you get the ball to your playmakers in space, something Coach Key talked to us about when we talked to him after the first quarter. He said, I want to get the ball to my playmakers in space and allow them to make plays. And you see their ability. Their leading returning wide receiver, a position that lost a good chunk of production from 2022. They have some pieces on the edge that have looked very good today. Into the final minute of this game. They'll hand out awards after that the fans will stick around for. Again, some recruits in attendance as well today here in Atlanta. On a beautiful day, one of nine ACC spring games. And it looks like that'll do it for the action that we'll see. Forrest, uh, a final thought on what we saw today? Georgia Tech has a stable of quick, fast receivers, and Kenyatta Watson is a player to watch next season on the back end of this defense. That's going to be a really strong secondary. Could perhaps be the strength of the team. Watson, another Georgia native. Those Georgia natives are sprinkled all over this roster and certainly have the potential for a significant improvement when the fall does roll around. We'll try to carry this momentum into the summer, into the weight room, onto the practice field, and build towards that fall campaign. For our excellent ACC Network crew, thank you guys. Awesome job today, as always. My analyst, Forrest Connolly. I'm Jason Ross, Jr., saying so long. Have a wonderful rest of your Saturday afternoon.